What's going on, everybody? My name is Zell Prince, and welcome back to yet another React video. I know it has been quite a while since I recorded a video. I have been doing some stuff off screen in terms of my personal life and YouTube as a whole, and some edited stuff that I've been needing to work on in terms of um, recording and editing. And as you guys can already see, we have a new display for reaction videos, something I wanted to um, do for a while, but wasn't sure how to do it at the time, but I figured it out. And now we got a new uh, setup for reaction videos. And another th reason why I have, I have been away from YouTube is because of some uh, interesting things, including my leg and now my arm. Uh, it's not broken. This is carpal tunnel that I have now developed. I don't know how I I know how I developed it, and now I'm aiming to take care of it. So that one another reason why I've been away from YouTube. Um, I'll be making an update video explaining why it disappeared and what um been going on somewhere soon. Maybe by the end of the week. I don't know. Maybe maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Won't. But I do definitely have to make an update video. So keep an eye out for that. Um, I. And we're going to be reacting to a SCP video, another one I've been meaning to look at for over a week now. And before I get into that, I have to say I did record an, a requested SCP video from Alpha Shocker. Alpha Shocker, I did record that video that you that you asked me to record. Um, problem was OBS decided to mess up around the time of the recording, and the file wouldn't open on any of my recording software. So sadly, I had to dump the file and delete it sadly so but if you have any other suggestions besides the SAP you wanted me to look at last time which was the zipper um please let me know and i think we're just gonna get right into this we're gonna be checking out scp054 water i don't know how to say that last word but we're gonna this is an scp i've actually been wanting to look at for a little while now and it piqued my interest and we're finally be reacting to scp videos by dr bob finally moving on to him him, and I'm going to be moving on to other SCP videos. I'm going to try and record them over the course of this week. But we're going to go ahead and get right into the video in 3, 2, 1, go. Who are you talking to? The young boy spins around, surprised to find his father standing behind him. The boy seems nervous and hesitant to answer. But after being asked again, he admits to his father that he was talking to the lady in the fountain. The boy's father is confused. The lady in the fountain... That's right. The boy explains that she is nice, just like mom. He thinks the woman in the fountain may even be his mom. The father sighs. He takes the boy's hand and leads him back inside the house, where the father is hosting a small get-together. One of the father's guests asks if things are okay, and he tells her that everything is fine. He's just worried about his son. It has been a very difficult... By the way, I forgot to mention I have never heard of SCP-054, so this is my first time ever... Hearing about it, just want to say that real quickly. Here, following the death of his wife, he tells her that he's afraid he might oh, be developing behavioral I... issues as he watches the boy staring out the window at the fountain in their backyard. Later that week in school, the children are supposed to be drawing pictures of their families. The teacher moves from child to child, checking on their progress, and stops at the boy. She wants to know what he's working on. The boy explains that it is a drawing of him, his dad, and his mom who lives in the fountain. The teacher doesn't understand. His mom lives in the fountain? That's right, the boy tells her. The fountain in their backyard was her favorite place in the whole world. His mother had told him that it was a magical place and was the reason they bought the house. After she died, he heard a voice coming from the fountain. It doesn't sound like his mom, but he knows it's her. She lives in the fountain now. The father thanks the teacher for calling and promises that he'll talk to his son. He's very sorry that the other children are frightened by the stories about a woman in their fountain, and he's going to make sure this whole business comes to an end for good. That night, as he is putting the boy to bed, he tells him that... It seems like to me that with the boy saying that his mother is now in the fountain and whatnot, it seems like almost like the mother's soul got trapped in the water of the fountain and... That's what it seems like to me so far. He knows he misses his mom, but he needs to stop with all of these claims about a woman in the fountain. And as much as he misses her and wishes that his mother would come back, he needs to realize that she's gone and not coming back. The father kisses the boy in the forehead and tells him one more time that there will be no more stories about the woman before tucking him in for the night. 
As soon as his father is gone, though, the boy gets out of bed, creeps to his bedroom window that looks down on their backyard, and stares at the fountain. He watches as reflections dance on the rippling water. The water goes oddly still, until a hand that appears to be made out of water seems to emerge out of the surface of the fountain and waves at him. The father leaves the bathroom and glances in to check on his son before heading back to his bedroom. He bolts upright when it dawns on him that his son wasn't in bed. He runs into the son's room and pulls the blankets off the bed, but no one is there. He frantically calls for his son and looks around the room when he sees something. He hurries to the window where he watches as his son walks towards the fountain. But what really has his attention is the woman, translucent and shining under the moonlight, beckoning for the boy to approach her. The father rushes downstairs and out into the backyard, where his son is in an embrace with the watery woman. He is terrified, but his fatherly instincts take over and he sprints to the fountain and rips the boy away from the creature. As he pulls the boy back from the fountain, he watches as the solid, watery figure of the woman appears to turn back into a liquid and collapse into the fountain. The father brings the boy inside the house. He doesn't understand what's going on, but the father just keeps repeating that he's okay. He's safe now. The next day, the father is on the phone with their local priest. He knows how crazy this sounds, but the police didn't believe him, and he didn't know where else to turn. The priest tells him not to worry. How is the priest going to... How is the priest going to try and remove an entity from the water? It's not demonic or anything. And he will be there soon to take care of it. The priest arrives at the house with two assistants and tells the father that it would be best if he and his son leave. The boy is crying, pleading with him not to hurt the nice woman in the fountain. The father has to struggle to restrain his son, but eventually is able to get him out of the house. Once they're gone, the priest turns to his assistants. He takes off his shirt to reveal a tactical vest underneath, emblazoned with the SCP logo as his assistants do the same. Time for containment, he says, as they head out into the backyard towards the fountain and the anomalous creature that lives there. Hi, I'm Dr. Bob, and this is SCP-054, also known as the Water Nymph. Nymph, SCP-054 is the designation that the SCP Foundation has given to an anomalous entity with some very strange properties. Made up of nine liters of what appears to be completely normal spring water, SCP-054 most often appears in the form of a female humanoid, but it is capable of a variety of forms, such as other it's humanoids and simple form. geometric shapes. Oh. It is unknown just how it is capable of taking and holding these shapes, or how it moves around once it does so. Is it capable of speech? That's the one thing that taught my mind. Since all tests performed so far have failed to show any thermal, electromagnetic, biological, or other phenomenon present in its body that could explain its abilities. Whenever SCP-054 enters a body of water, it will become indistinguishable from the surrounding water, and it appears that it must fully submerge itself on occasion in order to replenish its full volume, which is constantly being reduced through normal evaporation. Water that has evaporated off of the anomaly has also been collected by the Foundation, and it too is indiscernible from regular water and exhibits no special properties. Hmm. After its discovery, SCP-054 was moved to Site-08 for containment, where additional research and study of the creature could take place. Its special containment cell was made watertight and equipped with a specialized climate control system, as well as an ornate fountain filled with fresh spring water. Surprisingly, the entity seemed to enjoy its new home, and appeared happy really. to interact with Foundation researchers, guards, and maintenance staff, frequently mimicking their forms often in a playful manner. While at first, 054 would retreat back into its fountain when it wasn't interacting with staff, as- As far as I could tell, it doesn't seem to be a harmless SCP. It might, it might be on the Euclid class, but there are some rare occasions where sapient SCPs or self-aware SCPs are among the safe class, which is something that's not very rare because most humanoid SCPs are under Euclid because they are sapient and have a sentient mind of their own, which could pose to be more of a trouble. If it wasn't like an actual physical embodiment of water itself, then maybe it wouldn't be Euclid. Maybe it would just be safe as long as it wasn't harmful. As time went on, it seemed to grow more and more comfortable and eventually came to spend almost all of its time outside of the water though it would still always return back to the safety of the fountain and disappear into the water when attempts were made to extract samples directly from its body. Though it avoided having its water drawn, it was through a variety of different tests by SCP researcher Dr. Seskel that much of the Foundation's knowledge of SCP-054 was gained. 
Though whether the methods researchers used to acquire this information were appropriate is up to you to decide. In a test dubbed the water is. loss experiment, SCP-054 was denied access to water. As a result, its shape changed, with 054 becoming more compact, most likely in order to reduce its surface area as much as possible and reduce the rate of evaporation that occurred. For the first few days after access to water was removed, it would happily greet anyone who entered its containment cell, which may indicate that it was attempting to charm staff into providing water. When after a few days its water supply was still not turned on, it stopped acting especially cheery, perhaps realizing that its happy disposition was doing nothing to advance its cause. In an depressed. extreme temperature test, researchers were authorized to experiment with subjecting SCP-054 to temperatures below zero degrees Celsius. The entity became more and more lethargic as the temperature in the testing area was lowered and eventually froze completely. Ice wow. chips were collected for study, but analysis revealed no abnormalities or differences from standard water. The opposite test harsh, was also performed, and the temperature was raised to 95 degrees Celsius, uh -oh. just shy of the 100 degree boiling point of water. 054 became very aggressive as the temperature approached the upper threshold at which water can remain a liquid, and it attempted to escape the testing enclosure. Researchers noticed that following this test, the entity became increasingly resistant to being moved from its containment cell to the testing area, likely fearing that the researchers intended to do it harm. Yep. SCP-054's huh. memory was tested as well, and it proved very skilled at solving puzzles and navigating mazes. Researchers initially had an issue with motivating 054 to participate, but Dr. Seskel discovered that the anomaly was quite responsive to the use of electrical shocks. The researchers would often push 054 too hard in these tests, though, and soon found that they would need to give it a 48-hour rest period between any strenuous experiments. The final Yikes. test performed was meant to gain some insight into how SCP-054 maintains its form, by seeing how it reacted to a hydrochloric acid solution. It unsurprisingly resisted this test, and the temperature in the oh. testing area was lowered to just above freezing in order to try and control its behavior. This did not prove to be enough, though. SCP-054 fought came back aggressive. against Dr. Seskel and his research assistant, seriously injuring both of them and necessitating a halt Eesh. to the test. In fact, all well, testing on SCP- it itself. It doesn't want any harmful um, liquid compounds added to its already existing um, state. It would make sense for it to defend itself. SCP-054 was stopped following this incident, as it appeared to develop an extreme mistrust of males, who made up the majority of the staff who had been performing the tests. Following this attack on the Foundation staff, SCP-054 was classified as Euclid. Oh, I thought it'd However, be safe. once the tests ceased and 054 no longer had to come in contact with the research staff who were in charge of the experiments, <laughs> there was a span of over five years without any further incidents. Following this period, SCP-054's rating was downgraded to safe, hey, and go. now seems willing to begin participating in experiments once again, though now all tests fall under the purview of Biology Unit E7, and the use of only female personnel is recommended. Though classified as safe, caution must still be maintained when working with SCP-054. Maintenance personnel are required to wear chemical suits when working inside the containment area, and must spend 10 minutes in a special drying room once they exit to ensure that 054 has not somehow managed to cling to any part of them. In the okay. event of a containment breach, the entire enclosure is to be flushed with liquid nitrogen to freeze the entity. Is the water Thanks. nymph an example of the SCP Foundation going too far, containing a harmless anomaly who appears happy and benign until harm is done to it? Or is this simply the price we must pay in order to further our knowledge of anomalies and potentially stop a dangerous threat to humanity? The answer to that question is up to you. To further your... To me, I'd personally say, no, it's not the way to do it. If the SCP is, complete, is completely harmless for over a period of time, don't um, force yourself on that anomaly. Don't push it too far. Otherwise, you'll make it uh, harmful. I remember hearing from the GOC, Global Co Coalition, when they shredded a chair that was completely, didn't do anything that was harmless, they destroyed it and then the entity became very um, hostile and started putting the shredded remains of um, of, of its um, wood. I thought, it, I forgot the exact word for it. The, um, sawdust, there we go. Sorry, ended up throwing, uh, enveloping sawdust in the the throats that cut off all circulation through their windpipes. 
I remember hearing about that. So that's a good example of not to take things over the top, not to make an, a harmless SCP into a dangerous one. Same thing like the hijack SCP. I forgot the exact number. That SCP was completely harmless. One incident led to another, and the SCP is now a Euclid-class anomaly that is seemingly dangerous and cannot be stopped now. But I just wanted to give you guys my opinion of what I thought. Your own knowledge of anomalies that the SCP Foundation has in containment and potentially find the answer to that question, oh. I recommend you watch the files for SCP-007, Abdominal Planet, and SCP-16... Okay, I've already seen these two, the two videos already on screen, but... This is an SCP I've been wanting to look at for ever since the video came out. I heard of other of another SCP somewhat similar to this, where it was made of uh, liquid nitrogen. Uh, I think it was made out of liquid nitrogen, or was it just made out of H2O? I don't remember. It's been a long time since I've ser I've heard of certain SCPs before, but I've never truly looked into them unless I found a video that explains what they are in general. But. I don't know. I've just kind of look into stuff that SCPs that not only pique my interest, but are also very new to me, and I want to look, possibly look more into them into the future. And I do have a few SCPs, other SCPs I do want to look at. So keep them, keep keep up for those. But um, hopefully, you guys enjoyed today's video. I enjoyed watching this video by Dr. Bob. It's I've been watching Dr. Bob since his literally his first video, but I just never got around to recording his videos and every time i did the videos were usually two to three weeks old and i know how my channel is with terms of views some the videos that i upload that are seemingly later like the scp videos that i react to are seemingly that came out weeks before i did the recording they don't do well so i try and do scp videos when they come out but sometimes i don't have time to personally do to record them which why I end up watching them and not reacting to them. But hopefully you guys did enjoy today's reaction video. I will get more SCP related content out in the future. If you guys have any other SCP related content that you want me to react to, please let me know in the comment section and I will let you and I will see you guys later. Bye.